Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing this morning? Good. It's cold in here. I don't think we're going to have a problem interacting with these guys. Uh, a lot of answers, and all I said was, how are you doing this morning? <laughs> Um, I am Chuck Steele, manager of student life here at College of DuPage. My name is Chris Miller. I am working. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a professor of speech communication here at COD. And I'm going to be honest with you, as much as I like the engagement that you gave back there, I, I was a little, uh, I thought there might be a little more energy, you know, but I, but I do appreciate that it's uh, first thing in the morning. So I thought what I'm going to do to help get your energy up is give you a little foreshadowing of what is to come in your very new, near future. So. Uh, end of the day, we have a food truck luncheon for you guys. Any food truck fans here? We did some research and what we found out was that everybody loves food trucks. Who knew? Um, but that's not all. We are also having live band karaoke at the same time. Yes way. Yes way. We, we did a little research on that, and what we found out is that not everyone loves love, live band karaoke. Not everyone. Uh, but we encourage you to, to get out there and enjoy it. Uh, sign up, and, and basically, if you're not familiar with live band karaoke, it's just like karaoke, except there's a live band. See, you guys know. You've been around the block. Um, that, is, that is at the end of today, and we'll talk more about that as we go on. But I also want to tell you about Thursday night. Just by being here at New Student Orientation today, and for also for the students who are here tomorrow, and also for the students who are here on Thursday, for those New Student Orientations, you're all invited back Thursday night to watch Black Widow. That'll be in the pavilion out, right outside the MAC here. We will also be doing uh, food and drink there for the first 250 students, and there'll be a variety of outdoor games like giant Jenga, bags, Connect Four, that kind of thing. So get there early, that's coming up. Then you're thinking, Chuck, that's probably enough, right? Don't, don't tell me more now. Here's more. First two weeks of school, we have chaparral days. And that is a continuation of new student orientation where we invite you to stay on campus as much as you can during those first two weeks. Um, there's going to be a lot of open houses going on, so you'll be able to find out more information about uh, things here at College of DuPage. There's going to be a lot of social activities um, that are listed here, and so you're gonna, you're, it's a great way to just kick off your time here. One of the things you're going to notice about all of these events, or the vast majority of the events, are there are, is food involved. Because again, just going back to the research, Everyone loves food, okay, especially college students. Actually, 110% of college students love food, which is, it's weird research, but it's research. Um, so, so be aware of that. We, we do give out, at a lot of the events here at College of DuPage, we do give out a lot of food, so there's always that bonus. But there's another thing that, that uh, is at all of our events, and that is people. And I'm here to tell you that we have great people at College of DuPage. And I'm referring to our faculty, our staff, and our students. And I'm happy to welcome you to that grouping of great people. Um, today, you're going to meet a lot of great people. Um, again, both faculty and staff and each other. Um, and so we just hope you have a great time today doing that. I want to kick things off by introducing you to one of the great people we have here on campus. Our Assistant Provost of Student Affairs is here to give a welcome. So how about giving it up for Dr. Diana Del Rosario. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good. We are so happy to see you. This is the first time we gather in person to host NSO after the pandemic. So having you here it's exciting for us. I hope it's exciting for you. Uh, we are thrilled that we're back 100% in person for our activities. So we're very pleased to see all your faces here and we're glad that you are taking the time to connect with us. We can get, get to know you better. 
and we can help you build your story here at COD. So I want to ask a few questions and I just want people to raise your hands. How many of you took a little break and took a gap year after graduating from high school? I see some hands going up, very good. A lot of people were experimenting with taking a gap year. How many of you are coming straight from graduating the last year? Quite a few, congratulations on your recent graduation. How many of you took a little bit of a longer break and work or did some other things and now you said, I'm gonna go get that degree? A few of you, very good. So this is the beauty of community college. Community college is a place where you can write your own story. You can start at any point. We have associate degree programs, transfer programs. If you've read, you know, you already know probably what you're doing, what you plan to do. Many people come to community college to apply for a job after graduation, work while they go to school, or get a transfer uh, opportunity to a four-year school. We're ready to support you in whichever way you want to go. I want to highlight some things because you made the right decision for you. Um, College of DuPage is accredited by the Higher Learning Commission, which is the same organization that accredits four-year universities in the Midwest of the United States. And we just passed this last spring our accreditation with a perfect score. So we're doing great work here. And they visit and they assess everything we do from how we teach to how we do new student orientation and how we engage students. So you are at a great place with high quality education. So kudos to you for selecting College of DuPage. The other thing that we do very well is we keep things affordable. You could be paying the same courses that you take at COD at a four year university at three or four times the cost. We have something that, are, that we call the Illinois um, IAI courses, which are courses that transfer perfectly to a four-year university. And those courses are just exactly an equivalency to what you would take at a four-year university. So maximize your time while you're here at College of DuPage, making sure that you're taking courses if you're transferring that are gonna be the fit to that uh, program or four-year university. But if you're completing a program that is gonna lead to employment, Make sure that you also connect with our career services office so that they can help you find employment, opportunities, internships, or co-ops. So there's a lot that we have available for you. In addition to those academic things that I just covered, we are an NJCAA institution. We are part of National Junior College Athletic Association. We compete at the national level and the state level. Uh, this past year, COD was the national champion for football for NJCAA and for um, track, so we are a very proud institution in terms of our athletics. Uh, please stop by, watch our sports team. We have a huge uh, event in December for our football team. Take part, walk to the PE building, get to see our, our fitness center, and make this uh, a more comprehensive experience using your time here at the college. Another thing we do really well is we help students find employment sometimes on campus. So as part of the activities that we will have this year, one will be an employment um, opportunity for students to work at the college. So take advantage of that. If you want to come, you know, do some work here, go to the fitness center, get your classes done, and then head home with all of that accomplished, we can help you. So I want to, you know, um, congratulate you on your decision. I also want to make sure that I mentioned uh, a couple of areas that I think you need to keep in mind um, as part of your college experience as you're writing your own story as a college student. Find opportunities to volunteer if you are unsure about what your field of study is. Make sure that you explore programs, meet with advisors and ask questions about where does that program lead, how would you be able to finish, um, and also make sure that you connect with our advising department. They are the ones who can help you with personal um, issues, academic issues, and also with career exploration. So those are some of my tidbits uh, uh, with you know, spending some time here with you. I will continue to be around, so I hope we can connect through your uh, new student orientation experience. Um, all the best to you as you start your, um, your own story here at COD. Make the most out of it. Um, this is an opportunity for you to either reinvent yourself or add to your story or make sure that you change things up and get to meet new people, explore things that you have not explored before. All the best to you. Thank you for being here today. We'll see you around.
Thank you, Dr. Del Rosario. Um, she mentioned a lot of great points. We're going to be talking more about a lot of those things through the course of today. Um, how many people here already have come in with some questions about your College of DuPage experience? You ask a question about questions in the hands, you know, <laughs> the ones that do go up only go up to shoulder, shoulder yeah, height. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there. Um, hopefully, I'll be honest with you, hopefully through the course of today, you develop more questions. And by the end of the day, you get all those questions answered. So I do want to, before we get too far into things, I do want to go over the uh, agenda a little bit just so that you understand what's going to happen today. Um, it is listed in your program, which is in the uh, bags that you all received. This is, I should mention, uh, what I would call a forever booklet. It is not just for today. There's a lot of great information in there for your entire time at College of DuPage. So after today, bring this one home, throw it on your desk, your dresser, wherever you keep that stuff and use it for reference in the future. Um, today, this is the welcome. Uh, Chris and I are going to go over the keys for your success. Then on page five of the booklet, we have 15 workshops listed you get to choose two of those workshops to attend. So on page 15, look through there. We're gonna, I'm going to kind of run through the workshops later. We actually have 17. There are two not listed. So I'll explain that later. But you get to pick two to attend. If you read through the list and you're thinking, well, there's more than two I'd like more information on, all of the people who are doing presenting the workshops will be at, uh, outside during the food truck rally and the live band karaoke. So they will have tables available where you can walk up and get more information. Or during chaparral days, you can also, there'll be opportunities to get more information. So this is just a sampling. So pick two to attend. Um, after that, we're going to come back here. We're going to do the wrap up uh, of the keys to success. And we're going to do some giveaways. Um, we have some clean canteen water bottles to give away. We have some mini Polaroid cameras to give away, some bento boxes for packing your lunch, uh, or for anything, I guess, you can, it's your call. <laughs> um, and so we'll be doing some, some drawings for that. When you're going to the workshop, one thing you should know, we do an evaluation. We'll do one at the end of the main st stage here. At the end of the, each of the two workshops, we'll do an evaluation. You get one ticket just for showing up. If you do the evaluation on your phone, there'll be a QR code. You get two tickets. And that's we'll be drawing tickets for the giveaway. So make sure you do the evals. Um, after the wrap-up back in here, then we go out to the pavilion, which is right outside the MAC. And that's where the food trucks are, the live band karaoke, and the information tables. And I'll explain uh, during the wrap-up how the food trucks are going to work. One thing I do want to mention is there are tickets to the, uh, you were given for the food trucks. If you pre-registered, they're in your name uh, tags. If you did walk up, they were handed to you. Um, evidently, there was a little uh, mix up early on that a few people who did the walk up registration did not get their food tickets. So you know who you are, we know who you are. Come to the tables afterwards and we'll get you your food tickets for the food truck rally, okay? All right. I talked about a lot of the great people here at College of DuPage. I included you in that group of great people. And, you know, I think we all like to get to know other great people. You know, that's the one thing about great people. We want to know other great people. So we're going to do little activities that's going to help us get to know each other. It's, it's super simple and it's fairly fast. And it is called One Unique Thing. And what I'm going to ask you to do with One Unique Thing is you're just going to kind of group up right in your chairs where you're at and you're just going to kind of turn around in probably groups of, of about six, so maybe three in one row, three in the next row back, turn around and share one unique thing about yourself. It could be an experience you had, it could be a talent that you have, it could be a characteristic, anything that is unique. We're going to know if it's unique if nobody else in the group has that same experience, characteristic, or talent. If they do, you have to either choose something else or be more specific in order to make it unique. When you're all done, then I'm going to ask for a couple of uh, volunteers to just share their one unique thing with the group because, you know, one thing that we know is that there is a lot of uniqueness here and we love hearing about it. We sure do. Okay? And I'm going to, at the same time, I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce you to the orientation leaders. You've 
probably already met him, through, met him through the registration process, but there are the students with the green shirts on. You guys want to stand up? There we go. There they are. We, we could not do new student orientation without the orientation leader, so I'm going to ask them if they don't mind, if they can kind of mix it up with you and where, where possible, try to in, insert themselves within a group and also share one unique thing, okay? So you're only going to have probably maybe four minutes to do this, so go ahead, self-group up. Um, they'll also be walking around, and if someone feel, looks like they're maybe not in a group, they're going to help you find a group. So go ahead, share one unique thing. This is not a voluntold situation. You can't tell somebody else, share your unique thing. You can't encourage them. You can say you thought what they said was pretty interesting, but you can only volunteer yourself. That being said, who has one unique thing they'd like to share with the audience? This guy had his hand up. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, I got, I got sorry. somebody I got over here, here too. and then we'll yep. come over uh -huh. here. I'm with you, yeah. Okay, so hold on. Let me explain something first. Uh, this is what's called a catch box. Uh, what it is, is it's a box that you catch, but it also has a microphone. Nobody's impressed with the catch box till they get the microphone. You talk like this. You, oh. do, not, you do not talk like that. Not like that. Like talk, this. You hold, hold it right there. Like this. Yes, and it will oh, yeah. pick it up, okay? okay? So, that being said, because we're sharing, hold it, Chris. Uh -huh. That being said, since Chris did just use it, and we're, we're, we're being as safe as possible. Oh, good call. <laughs> good idea. Good idea. I got to be honest. Me and Chris had a bet. When would the uh, first applause break out? Neither of us had it on the catch box. Nope, uh, did not have it on the, the catch box. Neither sanitization. Right. But speaking of sanitization, I do want to mention, if, if you did show up here today and you're like, huh, there's more people than I thought there might be and I did not bring a mask and you would like a mask, we have masks if you want gloves because, you know, for whatever reason, we have gloves too and, of course, we got wipes. Uh, so we got all that. Just ask somebody. We'll get it to you. That being said, Chris is going to toss you the mic. Thank you. Go ahead and stand up. Good catch. I can do a Chewbacca impersonation. Well, well hold it, hold, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. We got, we got to introduce you. Oh, my name. Although well, they're very excited about Chewbacca. I, 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 sh I should, we should mention this for the people in the, for everybody, the, the, the people who are going to go next as well. Typically, the people on the stage are going to control the tempo. <laughs> <laughs> going okay, so I appreciate the enthusiasm. I do. It's Chewbacca. It's Chewbacca. I know you saw the excitement, but let's build up to it. Okay, right? let's do that then. So hold on. What's your name? Uh, Jackson. 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 Yes. Okay, I, that's enough. We've built it up enough, I think. <laughs> okay, Chewbacca. Everyone ready? <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Get, get. We're, not, we're not done, Jackson. I think, okay, we all made, I think we all made a mistake. So I'm going to ask you to do it one more time. But, but first, everyone close your eyes. Okay, go ahead. Good. It's like he's right behind you. It's good. It's good. So, so one, is that your only impression or are there others? First, it, it is spot on. I could do it's, Mark Wahlberg, but I don't know if it... <laughs> Oh, 
it's, it's not often we get a request not to do an impression. Uh, but you do Mark Wahlberg? Mm -hmm. Let's hear it. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Mark Wahlberg. You guys know me, right? You know, everybody's here with the new student orientation. Oh, my God, it's so much fun. <laughs> hey, got new student orientation. We, we just got a celebrity endorsement. Yeah, that's good. Could, could you, and I don't mean to be too forward, could you do what you just did for new student orientation, kind of an endorsement, but as Chewbacca? What would that, and I know it's a different language, but what would that sound like? <laughs> Sounded a little bit like Aquaman, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Sounded a little bit like Aquaman. All right, very good. Toss it back Thanks, up Jack. to Chris. Get ready, you're gonna love this. Okay, here we go, your name. My name is Liam. Remember what we said about not going right like that? I like it close. <laughs> you know what, we got tons of wipes, go ahead. It is, it is fine. Uh, what, what, you, what did you say it was? Huh? Liam. 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 Yeah. See, the only thing when you go close, it kind of, you know, distorts it a little bit. Liam, what is your one unique thing? Um, I've had the opportunity to meet a lot, to meet a lot of famous people, but for most recently for me and what I'm passionate about, um, I'm friends with like two elite level power lifters. So basically like they go and compete with like the Michael Jordan of strong people. Um, their names are Ed Blair. He's the uh, world record bench press holder in the 220 weight class. And he's my height. I'm, I'm not tall. I'm 5'6". He's 220, le lean, like veins popping, everything. He's just massive. And so like in a me. full powerlifting meet, he benched 574 in a full meet at 220, which is almost like, what, three times his body weight. And then the other guy... I was going to say... Three times his body weight. Just right? one. It was uh, it was just one. Um, and then the other guy is a 900 pound squatter. He's also my height at 220. So, so one. I think it's safe to assume that that is unique to the entire room, right? Nobody else knows these guys. No, I don't know. But I, my question for you is, how how did you connect? Are you are you a weightlifter? Um. I was supposed to compete in June, but I was an idiot and I injured myself. <laughs> Injuries suck. Um, but my buddy recommended me to this powerlifting gym in Carroll Stream called uh, Surge, and they just... <laughs> One of the OLs loves it. Well, there it goes. And they just, like, so <laughs> happened to be there, and I recognized them, and I just, like, started, like, fangirling. So... Uh... Well, that, that, that is very cool, and it's cool that you have such a strong interest that you would recognize them. I mean, I always think, I, I always like it when I'm like in that bubble of this is, you know, this is the world that I know, and then you meet somebody, a celebrity from that area, so very cool. Um, all right, you want to toss it back? Chris, yeah, did you have a follow-up? I have, no, I don't know any, I don't, I don't, I don't wait left, I, look at me. <laughs> I have to try it. Um, okay, hold it. Hold it, hold it, Chris. <laughs> safety first, safety first. Okay, it's going the distance here. All right. Okay. So, what is your name? I'm Nina. Hello, Nina. 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 Yep. And your one unique thing? My one unique thing is when I studied abroad in Australia, I ate kangaroo. <laughs> I see that awesome. face. I would no. call that a mixed reaction. Yeah. Well, it's unique. Do you, do you, yeah, no, it no, it's absolutely unique. <laughs> and, and I will say this, one of the things I love about traveling is eating. Yeah. I mean, that is a, it's just a great way to experience all the different cultures. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about your study abroad in Australia? Because, sure. uh, one, we do a ton of study abroads here, so and they're oh, highly gosh. recommended. But I don't think we do one to Australia. Yeah. We I, do. 
Yeah, of course we do. We do. We go everywhere. I should have known. Um, we'll talk more about that later, too. But anyways, tell us about your experience in Australia, other than the eating of the kangaroo, although that is Yeah, see, though, unique. I'm really interested in the kangaroo. Okay, hold on. <laughs> So, real briefly, because yeah. I've never known anyone to have kangaroo, because I've, I've, I've had ostrich, right? Oh, hey. That's all I've ever had. Um, where did you have it in? Was it like in a soup? Was it on a plate, no. like a fish with on the eyes? On a prairie? So I don't know. I, <laughs> How'd that work? So, I had it in Sydney. Okay. So, it was in, you know, a metropolitan area. Okay. Metropolitan, sorry. Sure. And they, it was at a nice restaurant. They served it on a plate. It yeah. was like a steak. Okay. I had it with mashed potatoes. Okay. Did it taste like steak, like regular steak? It, or more? it tasted like steak, but it had a slightly different, the texture was the same, but because it's not a cow, sure. it did taste different. And fun fact, when you eat kangaroo, they get the meat from the tail. Oh, really? Yes. So that's only where it's from? Yeah. Okay. That is a very broad definition of fun. And then the last thing I have about the kangaroos, <laughs> when you were there, did you see kangaroos just in the wild too, like running around? I, or? So I didn't see them in the wild, but I went to the Steve Irwin Zoo, and they actually just have, like, domestic kangaroos hopping around the zoo. Cool. Not in an enclosure. So I took a selfie with one. And did you see any joeys in any pouches? I didn't. No? No. Okay. That's all I have on the kangaroo. <laughs> Chuck? I, I did have one follow-up, and I, I apologize because uh, something was on the ground. I picked it up. I got a little distracted. But you said the kangaroo's name was Sydney? No, no I ate the kangaroo in Sydney. Oh, but she I didn't thought, eat I Sydney. Thought, in thought, Sydney. Oh God, the no! Was named Sydney. <laughs> it wasn't named. Like, this okay, is Sydney. Okay, I got that back. Okay, do you think you can toss that all the way back up here? Thank you. No. Okay. I'll Let's try. see. We're all, we're all gonna find out together. Oh! For for the record, you did your part. You th that you did great. Uh, we're going to do one more, Chris. Okay. How do I drop that? I don't drop anything. I love that you clap for that. Just so you know, Chris is going to be thinking about that drop oh, all I'll day. Oh, I'll be thinking about that for day. a while. I got someone way in the back, back, back there. We've never had anyone in the far back row before. Do you see that? Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to go halfway. So I'm going to go to the student ambassadors first. Just so you know, this is the Mackinac Arts Center's least favorite activity. <laughs> Throwing things around in the theater. Okay. Hi. Yeah, sure. Hello. Hello. And your name? My name is Joey. Oh, <gasps> that's so crazy. <laughs> Thank God you're sitting back there. Oh my God, that's so crazy. <laughs> Go ahead. That's crazy. Yes, Joey. Uh, my one unique thing is I have over 20 tattoos, and by over 20, I mean I lost count. Describe your first tattoo. Okay. It was uh, the, this shark on my wrist. His name is Greg. And I have five sharks because sharks are epic. Thank epic? You. Epic. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hold it, hold it. What do you got there? We got a shark bottle opener down here. So this is crazy. I will say this though. This is what I love about one unique thing. Because even when we sometimes find out it's not entirely unique, it's such a great connection thing. Sh okay. Sharks are epic. Uh, sharks are epic. Go ahead. You have five sharks. What? Are we we're not going to do all the tattoos. But is there anything? Any other tattoo you want to highlight? Um, I'm planning. Because I'm a nerd, I'm getting a Pokemon half sleeve. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah no I got Pokemon. two so far. It's going to be colored in, too. <laughs> let's, let's do it, because, you know, these days, I, tattoos obviously aren't that unique. Over 20 is pretty unique. That, that is a lot. Do we have anybody else in the over 20 tattoo club? Over 20 tattoos. You are so polite. He, he asked, can I add a comment? <laughs> How nice. Yeah. Yes, you can. But first, before you just add a comment randomly, what is your name? Uh, my name is Eric, and I've heard you only three miles back. Oh. oh. 
Very cool. He wants to know if he can stand up. You are the most polite student that we've ever had at New Student. Stand up. Yes, of course. Very cool. Those, those do sound awesome. It was a borderline commercial. You're drawing your own tattoos. I felt like you're kind of throwing it out there as see me. Um, can you do Pokemon? Pokemon. 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 You know, I have to be honest, don't care. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and see, I got into Pokemon Go during the quarantine, during the pandemic. So, like, I'll take more friends today if you want to come up here afterwards and share. And I do care. I shouldn't say I'm that. I'm level 43. Yeah. Come find me. We'll definitely hook up. I'm... Okay. Um, how do you feel about tossing that back, Joey? Not confident. How far do you think you can go? What about to this row of OLs right there? Someone in the green shirt. In Someone with the green shirt okay. stand right up there. there. Perfect. Okay. That's a good toss. Woo! That works. A little help from the crowd. Come halfway. Okay. That was just a random... Here we go. <laughs> it, it, kind of, it kind of just went on its own at yeah, the end there, right? Yeah, you didn't even move. Yeah. Uh, that was awesome. That was awesome. And Thank I love you. hearing the one unique things. Um, it, it makes it so interesting to just find that out about you. And, and do not be surprised if during the rest of the day, either I or somebody else, if, if I see you, I might be. So what was your one unique thing? I just think it's a great conversation start, a great way to get to know people, and you never know what you're going to hear. So, that being said, um, I would like at this time to bring out one unique student. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and the reason this student is unique is because she is the current student trustee at College of DuPage, and every year there is only one student who sits on the board of trustees. So, with that said, how about a hand for Aisha? Go ahead. Good morning. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all, I, you were talking about the sharks, Chewbacca, weightlifting, and I was back there listening to everyone, like baby shark, doo 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 doo. <laughs> but yes, I am the student trustee of the College of DuPage, and that makes me unique. So I sit on a board of trustees, and we basically supervise the institution, and I get to represent your future voices, so I'm so excited to have you all here. And even though that makes me unique, I just want to let everyone know that that, where you're sitting, is where I started. Just a year ago, I was unsure. I was worried. I didn't know if I was going to fit into COD. But look at me now. I am here, I am fitting in, and I'm letting you all know that you will fit in too. We as OLs, all the green shirts, we're here for you. All the people behind stage, in front, in the back, everyone guiding you, I saw your smiles. We all saw the positivity. We can't wait to see you at COD. We want to keep you engaged. So if you see us on campus, say hello, wave at us. We'll wave right back at you. But yeah, just a quick introduction, and I can't wait to see you all on campus. <laughs> great, great job. Just, just for the record, she was not kidding. Say hello to her. She wants to hear from students in her role as student trustee. So, all that your entire time here, or at least this year during her term, look for her, Aisha. Aisha. Pardon me? Uh, second year. Yes. You know, it's funny. I will say this, and we're going to talk about it later, but you know, the whole freshman, sophomore, junior, senior thing, one of the things that we encourage at College of DuPage is that everyone follow their own path in their own time, right? There's a lot of things going on in your life, so uh, you should proceed at whatever is appropriate for you, but that sometimes makes classifications like freshman or sophomore or whatever uh, not, not always accurate because, you know, you, some people go by academic terms, some people go by amount of credit hours. Uh, so not really, a bit of a tangent there, but I do like to point it out because it's really important, you know, going back to the one unique thing, that you really lean into your uniqueness and you, you do 
college the way that it works best for you at the pace that works best for you? What's one unique thing about me and him? Well, we're on stage. <laughs> um, but that's an excellent question. And so at, at, at this time, and it's like we're working together. It's like you're part of the, the three of us now we are all working together. I do want to give Chris an opportunity to talk about his one unique thing. He's got a great story, so let's pay attention to Mr. Chris Miller. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Chris Miller, huh? I like the emphasis on that too, Chuck. Uh -huh. um, so I, I say that. So look, I don't even know how to start any of this today. Right? I really don't. Um, I drove here today from Lombard. Uh, turned off my radio, started to like contemplate what I wanted to talk to you about, and really couldn't get through it. Uh, I just couldn't. I couldn't even start the. Couldn't even start my talk. Uh, I'm even struggling now. It happens to me. Um, you know, I, I know it's funny. We're talking about it being really. We're. Uh, it's really cold in here. You know, and I know I'm. I'm freezing myself. I'm shaking, but I'm shaking for like a couple of reasons. Like. I'm shaking because I'm cold. I'm also shaking because I'm crazy nervous right now. Um, and it says I'm a professor of speech, right? That's what it says. And I've been here since 2002, um, but I'm crazy nervous. Like more nervous than I've ever been in my entire life talking to people. I haven't been in front of people in three years. Three years I haven't been in front of students. You know, I went out setting faculty this college in 2015. Do not applaud this. <laughs> I did. I won that in 2015. And, uh, and I won it because I just, I'm always in front of students. I'm always teaching in front of students. Um, man, I haven't seen you in a long time. It's not even a miss, it's not that I can't get through it. I just want to take you in. I got to take in the energy a little bit. I got to take it in because I, I, I'm going to be coming back here in a couple of weeks and I'm going to be face to face with you again. And, um, and I'm super excited about it. Um, but I'm also nervous again, not from COVID, nervous because I'm a person that's living my life and doing the best I can like you all are, you know? And we're all in this together. And one thing that Chuck has said he said it twice just now, and I've never really maybe I've heard him say it before. We're on our own path at our own pace. And then he put an emphasis on Mr. Christopher Miller. And I say that because I'm waiting. I'm waiting like any day. Like it could be, like I could go to my phone right now and there could be an email from one professor at Northern Illinois that says, okay, we're ready. Let's schedule the dissertation defense. You see, like, in December, I'm going to pull my third degree from Northern Illinois University, okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to pull, I pulled a, ma I pulled a bachelor's in speech communi or in communication, I pulled a master's, and then I'm going to pull a, I'm going to pull an EDD in curriculum and instructional leadership, and then he's going to call me Dr. Miller. I'm 49 years old, okay, and I'm going to pull my doctorate December of 2022. And I want you to know that, okay? That's how long has it taken. So many applause. Look, the thing about it is this, is that this is why I'm here, right? My doctorate, and I'm not here to talk to you about the doctorate, although I'd love to talk to you about it. You guys don't want to sit around for that. It's taking me so long to write. It's 422 pages. It's crazy. And it's, I'll tell you, it's on, I'd love to say about it. It's on um, campus carry and teacher performance. And what campus carry is, is um, so currently there's only between 5 to 12 states that currently allow teacher or students to conceal and carry a weapon while attending a class in institutions of higher education. 
So as I would be teaching my Speech 1100 class, I or my students, if you were over a particular age, you'd be allowed to conceal and carry a weapon to protect ourselves from this school shooting thing that we happen to see. Um, just for your, you know, the state of Illinois is a prohibitory campus carry state. You are not allowed to carry a gun on campus in the state of Illinois. Just know that now. But there are states that allow this. So I'm curious about how do teachers teach and how do students learn when there is the possibility of a gun being in the room. And what I have done is I've collected stories. I've just interviewed people. I've interviewed nine people from Texas and nine people from Illinois three times for 90 minutes at a time. I transcribed all those interviews and I found out why our people are doing this and what they're feeling. It's interesting to me, but it's not the point that's not why I'm here. I'm here because it's a story. Yeah, I'm collecting stories. And that's something that you need to know as young students is that this is a, I'm getting my doctorate by listening to people tell stories about what it's like to teach. That's it. Okay, so, so data isn't always in numbers and, and whatever we might have learned before, what you might conceptualize it to be, it might be something different. I wish I had known this when I was 19 years old. Look, I'm here to tell you my one unique thing. I'm not here to tell you about my degrees from Northern Illinois, about my dissertation. Take my class, Speech 1100. I'm going to be talking to you about it all semester long. <laughs> but the thing about it is that I'm here because I want to talk to you about what happened between 1991 and 1995. Because we're all in these stories. We all have these stories that we're on and we've been going through. And we all, have, we all together have all lived through a pandemic together. We all now know what Zoom is together. You know, like before the pandemic, you might not have ever even, I don't even know if I had even heard of the word Zooming in for class, right? But now we know what Zooming in is. This is like, I'm old enough and so is he. I never knew what texting meant when I was your age, right? Texting. And now you're like, hey, text me later. Like that's part of our, part of our vocabulary. And now we're like, I'm going to Zoom in for class today. See how language changes and how think experiences changes. We can all understand that. But see, one thing that makes me really unique is how I even got to this doctorate in the first place. Because I'm not even really probably supposed to be here. Like, look, I graduated, oh, gosh, I can't even, I, I just get so emotional talking about this, especially with you. You know, I'm born in 1973, Grand Forks, North Dakota. I never went to the same elementary school, K through five. I never went to the same school for more than one academic semester. My dad was a insurance auditor and he moved all over the place. Doesn't really matter. I eventually ended up in Colorado where I graduated high school. I graduated Rocky Mountain High School in 1991, okay? That's what I did. Rocky Mountain High School, Rocky Mountain High school is, is in Fort Collins, Colorado, where Colorado State University is. So a lot of my friends assumed that they were gonna go to college and all that stuff when they were going to school, but that wasn't part of my experience. Like my parents don't have college degrees. They're, they're blue collar workers. My dad works and had worked construction. He was an insurance auditor. My grandfather had his own concrete company. My grandpa, my grandpa Miller and my grandma Miller, they lived in Wyoming on their own farm. We didn't have college experience. So when all my friends went to college and my parents moved from Fort Collins, Colorado to Sassoon's to, to California, I stayed in Colorado alone by myself at age 18. And I lived in an apartment alone until the, the rent came due and I didn't even know what rent was. I was working part-time at Blockbuster Video. <laughs> bringing in the big bucks, <laughs> and I was homeless. July, in, I graduated on June 1st, 1st of 1991, and July 1st I was homeless. I bought a Subaru and I was living out of the back of my car up at, at, at Horse Tooth Reservoir. That's what I was doing. And then it started to snow and I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So I drove from Colorado to Cali, where my parents lived. And then my dad said, you should probably go to college or move out and get a job because I don't really want you here. I mean, it's like my dad hated me. He's like, but how am I supposed to, I can't do this forever, bud. So I was like, how am I supposed to go to college though? I don't know. I took the ACT, I got a 19 on it. 19 on the ACT, that's what I got. I went to a place, I lived in uh, Dixon, California, and I went to a place called Solano Community College in Sassoon City, California. And I had to take these English placement tests. And I got placed in a developmental English course. I'll never forget it. And I went to the counselor to ask why. 
and she showed me my score, and my score was equivalent to having a fourth grade reading level. And uh, why? But I never, I'm not, this is the thing about me that's so crazy to talk about. What makes me unique is that going K through 12, I never read a book. Not one. Now, hold on. Not one. So a couple of you are like, me neither. So my question to you is, what's your path going to be? Because you're at a big disadvantage right now. That's cool. But the thing about it is that what are you going to do? For myself, I went to Solano Community College for four years. Four years. 1991 to 1995. That's what I did. To your experience, it took me four years to do it. It was my path. Paid for every part of it by myself working at Blockbuster Video. And then, I know, shout out Blockbuster. Wish that stuff would come back, you know what I'm saying? But the thing about it is that I ended up just going into speech communication because I joined the, I, I joined the speech and debate team at Solano Community College. And I ended up, I wanted, I didn't know how to pay for school. I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't have any questions. I didn't have any answers. I didn't know who to ask. So I asked my speech professor, Dr. Gary Drabelvis and Janine Whitesell, and I said, how do I do what you do? And they said, you need to, I live just outside of San Francisco, by the way. And they said, you need to move to DeKalb, Illinois. <laughs> and so I did. <laughs> I graduated, I got my associate's degree from Solano, and then my girlfriend, Johanna, who's now my wife, and. We have two children together, it's great. We packed up a U-Haul together and we drove from Cali to the Cal. <laughs> and I've been here since 1995. See, and it's not that like, whatever, that's just my path. And I was at Northern and I, two years later, hey, by the way, it took me four years to get my associates. Two years I got my bachelor's, two years after that I got my master's. It took me just the amount of time to get my bachelor's and my master's than I did to get my associates. And then, of course, it's taken me, add, add the numbers up to the top. <laughs> it's taken me some time, okay? I've had other problems. But the point is, I want to let you know that now. Like, I am excited to see you. This is what got me today because I knew that I was going to see a bunch of endless possibilities. Like, I, I don't know if I'm always supposed to be on this stage doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I think I'm, I am because that's a path. You're going into business. I knew I wanted to go into, I knew I wanted to be a teacher of some sort, you know? And I love that you're like, business, do it. And if you're like, later on, you're like, this isn't what I want, then you come find Chris Miller and say, um, Dr. Miller, and I will be Dr. Miller. <laughs> Just say, hey, I need help. Because one thing I want y'all to know is this, okay? Is it was you are, when you're gonna have questions today, and you're gonna have a bunch of them. And, and I want you to ask as many as you can and get as many answers. And one thing I don't want to happen is, oh, all my questions are answered, that should not happen. You should be like, and now I have more questions. Because, but the dissertation, I thought the dissertation was gonna show me answers about Campus Carry. All I did was open up a bunch more questions. And that's what makes it more fun. Because now it makes me wanna go back into the data and into the literature to, add, to find out more answers and get more questions. And if you can do that today, if you can get a couple of questions and get them answered and go, you know what, and you get home today, I need another answer, where do I get that? You come back to COD and you answer the question. You just get the answers. I want you to know we have, there's so many people here that got so many answers. We don't have all of them. I can almost guarantee you that you've got as many answers as I've got. And I want you to share your experiences with each other. I want you to share with each other and help each other. Because gosh, one thing that we learned over those past three years is that we do have to sort of do this together. <laughs> we have to do this together. <laughs> the last thing I'll tell you is this, and this is something I wasn't gonna say, but darn it, I say it anyway. I started the doctorate not because I wanted to. And I was like, ah, something for me to do. Started my doctorate in 2015 because at that point I was one year sober. And at the time, I just wanted something to do. I am today eight and a half years sober. Yeah. And look, look. I do appreciate so much that you, that you applaud that. Um, it is the worst thing that ever happened to me was that. 
because it almost everything that I worked for almost and still could every single day at a time be taken away from me again and I recognize that but I, one thing I do know is this is that I cannot do any part of anything that I've ever done by myself I can't I can't be sober by myself I can't go to school alone I can't teach my own thinking it's one guy's thought that's it and when you're here at COD, I have been here since 2002. And when I pull the doctorate, I'm staying. Not because I'm like so in love with COD. I love COD. But I love him. I love that guy. I love the people that are up there. Like, I don't have a connection to the school. I have a connection to the people that have supported me and applaud me. And, 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 and when you are in my class or you are here on campus and these people are willingly wearing these COD shirts and they jump around, they do it because they want you to have an experience that they are having. And if you decided to come to new student orientation today, you were like, you know what, I just want to get started off of the right foot. And that's a cool way to be. It's a cool place to be. And I'm grateful that you're here. And I'm really grateful that you let me tell you this today. This, it won't happen tomorrow. I'll talk tomorrow, but I won't be emotional like this tomorrow because you were the first. And I am very grateful that you allowed me the chance to talk to you. And I'm really grateful that you're here. Let's go into the next year on the right foot. I'm going to pull a doctorate. You take the next step to be pulling your own doctorate. And if you in your head go, oh, that's not for me, 19 on the ACT, fourth grade reading level. This is your example. You might have to do it, I guess, when you're 50, sure. Try to maybe go earlier or don't. Be a lifelong learner. It's cooler that way. I don't got anything else else to say. I'm going to keep dribbling on. It's up to you. Mr. Chris Miller, keep it going. I can't keep saying Mr. too, too, too much longer, so I got to get it in. Um, welcome, 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 Dr. Miller. You know what? Honestly, it is fine to get a little ahead of the game, right? I don't think so. We got to wait. We got to wait. We got to wait. One day at a time, right? We got to go one day at a time. Let's just wait till that happens. I do want that. Just think, have your thoughts. Have your thoughts about it. Have your thoughts. Have your thoughts about it. Have your thoughts about it. I'm good, go ahead. All right. Uh, my one unique thing is I dove in a foot and a half of water and have a plate in my neck. All right, next. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I think you all can find inspiration in that. <laughs> I'm okay, I'm all right. Pardon me? It's, it's not even funny. I didn't say it was a joke. I said it was unique. <laughs> I will tell you this, what makes it even more unique is I also have an artificial shoulder. And also, the name Chuck. The, uh, Charles actually means, if you look in a baby book, what all the different names mean. Uh, it means man. And, and if you recall, my last name's Steele. Yeah, he's Superman. It took me a while to get there, but I got there. But, <laughs> but seriously, I dove into a foot and a half of water. Anyways, not the brightest guy in the, in the bunch. Um, we told you we would give you the keys to success, and we are. Whether you realize it or not, we are giving you the keys to success. Um, I want to tell you the three Gs. It was the key. Honestly, where you can find inspiration, you know, and that's even with all the uniqueness and as you talk to each other and as you meet people here at College of DuPage, that is your job, is to get to know them and find the inspiration. And like Chris said, we all run on the power of people, right? The power of community. I kind of, we didn't mention this at the beginning, but we are a community college and we could not be prouder of that for both those reasons. One community, two college. We'll explain more later. But that community part is a huge part of our essence at College of DuPage. So, the three G's, and we're gonna go through this pretty quickly, but this is something that you should remember for your entire time at College of DuPage. 
Um, we did one unique thing. We know that there is a lot of uniqueness here at COD. We know that there's a lot of diversity, a lot of different types of people here at College of DuPage, but at the same time, we can put you into two categories. One of those categories is that you are a genius. If you're attending College of DuPage, it's my take that you are a genius. And if you do not feel that you're a genius, the other category is that you are incredibly lucky. I'll let you decide which category you belong in, but the incredibly lucky get all the things that the geniuses get. The geniuses didn't intentionally, the lucky people just got lucky. So here's why. Geniuses, uh, you're a genius if you attend College of DuPage. Two primary reasons. One, a little bit obvious, money. Uh, Dr. Del Rosario mentioned it. We are cheaper than a four-year school. We are cheaper than a lot of other options. Um, and and that, it, it doesn't take a genius to realize that. I should point that out. Um, but the geniuses know, they, they tend to think ahead. And they know that getting out of college with the least amount of debt or having paid the least amount of money gives you more options when you're out of college in terms of the job that you take or where you live or the car that you buy. Less debt equals more options. Geniuses understand that. Um, we, we have a saying here at College of DuPage's, uh, we have a lot of sayings, but one of them is the more you're able to live with your parents while you're in college, the less likely you'll have to live with your parents when you're out of college. And I'll tell you another thing. The, sometimes, and you, you, you're probably aware of this, sometimes when people come to College of DuPage, they're, they can be a little bit you know, jealous or envious of their friends who go away to a four-year school or maybe even just started their career, right? That, that, that happens. But what I will tell you, what a lot of people are not aware of, is that when you're done with your higher education experience, those same people are gonna be jealous of you because of the options that you have, because you're thinking long-term. Why? Because you're a genius. The other thing I wanna tell you about you know, the whole money thing is, higher education, and Dr. Del Rosario referred to this, higher education is not a transactional endeavor. It's not like, buying a car, right, where there's an agreed upon value. It, it, this is not a you get what you pay for situation. Studies show when they, uh, Purdue and Gallup, Purdue University and Gallup International uh, did research and they wanted to see what impact college had on happiness after college in terms of your professional life and in terms of your personal life. What they found was what you do in college had a greater impact than where you go to college. What you do in college has a greater impact on your happiness than where you go to college. It's how you do college, right? You create your own value. Yes, there's a tuition amount that's tied to it, but that is not the value. You create the value. These keys to success that we're gonna be talking about is not only how to be successful academically, it's how to increase the value of what you're paying for. Geniuses have some understanding of that, and that's one of the reasons why they chose to come here. Um, college is not transactional, it is transformational. And that is very open-ended. You get a lot of say into how transformational it's gonna be. That's up to you. Um, but the other thing, you know, is the education. I would stack the education that you get here at College of DuPage against anywhere else for the first two years. Um, you know, Chris, do you want yeah, to talk I, about I the think, education? Yeah, I, I, I was going to, yeah, you know, the thing about it is, you know, I don't ever, I don't ever, I don't like bashing the other, what we all do, but the one thing about, look, okay, I just, I told you, I was going to try, I'm trying to pull this doctorate, right? And I've been going to school at Northern because Northern offers the doctorate, but, when I am teaching, just, this is the one example, when I'm teaching Speech 1100, you're learning Speech 1100 from me, right? The guy who's been at COD since 2002, who has a bachelor's and a master's, and then is getting his doctorate, and so the next year will be doctorate, and I'll still be teaching the same, the same Speech 1100 class. But when I got my bachelor's degree, and I was moving on to my master's degree, as part of my teacher's assistant or my graduate assistantship was that I taught two sections of speech 1100 as I was working on my master's degree. So I want you to just know that or think that a little bit. 
So you're taking speech 1100 at NIU from me. I just received my bachelor's degree two months ago, and now I'm teaching speech 1100 to you. That version of Chris versus the version of Chris that you're going to get today, right? The same class, the exact same syllabus, same textbook and everything. Which teaching experience or learning experience do you think is more valuable if you're learning just from me? the teacher of today or the teacher that just got his bachelor's degree with the limited you know, knowledge and all that. Just keep that in mind. At Northern Illinois, you're paying over $1,000 for that course versus here you're paying $400. It is, it's not even it's a smart decision. It's just, it's almost illogical to not make it. You need to know how important that first one is that you're here. These first two years, everyone has to take pretty much the same courses anyway. So you get yourself a better you know, basis of education from people that have a little bit more experience for a cheaper cost. Sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense when I try to explain it, like why everyone wouldn't do this, but whatever. Everyone has their own experience. I'm glad you're here, and it's a smart decision that you're here. And again, this, this in a, you, you probably heard from family and friends. First two years of school, this at a four-year school, this size auditorium would not be unusual for a class. This is a course, yeah. Right? We have class sizes like 25, right? And that is a better teaching environment. Um, I, I just, you know, Chris mentioned this first time we're doing this in three years. We have so much to talk about in so little time. Yeah, we'll so we're going to keep moving and, and go through these pretty quick. Second G, grab the wheel. You are in charge of your higher ed experience, right? Um, I'm not going to go through the whole metaphor. I'm, I'm going to have to hit the highlights because we, we yeah, do have to sure. get through here. Um, our biggest two pieces of advice in terms of grabbing the wheel is to know what is available for you, how to help you get through your high school, or your high school, your uh, college experience as effectively as possible. And then, as Chris mentioned earlier, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. Um, here are some of the workshops that are listed on page five that you can choose. This is a good starting point for this. We have access and accommodations. If you need any kind of accommodations, if you had something in high school and you might need that uh, when you're in here at College of DuPage, that is a se session for you. We have career services. It is never too early to start thinking about internship, career preparation, job opportunities, starting your professional network, all of those things. Uh, there's a session on that. Our counseling, advising, and transfer office is actually doing three sessions today. Uh, one is on the first year fundamentals, the things you need to know to be successful. Uh, they'll go into depth on a lot of the things uh, that they offer. If you're undecided, and trust me, it, is, it boggles my mind that anybody, a traditional age student at 17, 18, 19, 20 even, would have any idea what they want to do um, so if, you, if you're undecided at this point, just know that that is so common. If you're confident about what you want to major in and what you want your career to be, just know that that changes a lot. Uh, that's all part of the experience of going through it. And if it doesn't change, more power to you. Uh, tips for transfer is the third session. That is about, you know, getting ready to transfer to a four-year school. And again, never too early to start thinking ahead. That's, again, that's what we do. A student for a Center for Student Success, we call them informally. They're our navigators, and they help you through the, uh, really through all aspects of the higher education experience. So they, they are here to help, and they, they will tell you about what services they provide. Financial aid, one of the most important things for get, you know getting your uh, paying your way through school. It's not only something you do when you first enter. You got to keep turning in the forms, keep things going. We have a lot of scholarships available for a lot of different categories. It's not just academic scholarships, we have different types of that tie into your own personal uniqueness. So that's all available through financial aid. We have the Learning Commons, which is our tutoring center. And again, this is for everyone. And it's not for people who are all of a sudden, you know, who are not doing well. It's for everyone to do better than they would have done without. So whether if you're a D student, it can help you get to a C. If you're a C, a B, a B to an A. If you're an A, it's going to help you maintain that A. So it's for everyone. And then we have one of the greatest libraries uh, in the country. Yeah, for in sure. the country. And that's serious. When people transfer to a four-year school, they still come back and use our library for their research. We have such great resources, such great people. So that is uh, grab the wheel. We also have our food security initiative. 
We want you, you have to be well nourished to do well in school. Mm -hmm. And it's more than just our fuel pantry, which we have, and we call it the fuel pantry because food is what feeds us, right? Um, we also have a fuel garden. So in addition to things that you might uh, find on a shelf, we also have things coming from a garden. We have, it's all sustainability focused. We have our, our environmental biology faculty are involved in it. We have our culinary faculty are involved in it. We have art faculty involved in it. English, it's a, it's a great initiative, but we have all this available for you. The last G that I want to talk about is get involved. And again, this is where you add the value. And so again, I'm going to fly through some of these workshops. Uh, the, the two with the red are the ones not in your book. So we have athletics and PE. So you'll find all about the intercollegiate teams that we have here at College of DuPage. We have an awesome intramural program that has, you know, took a break with the pandemic, but is now getting going again. And then all the physical education classes. We have a great center for student diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, if you want to hear directly from faculty and students, get their perspective of how to succeed in school, we have a faculty and student panel. Um, if you open, if you go to page six and seven in your program, those two that are missing from the list are listed on the map. So you can find where they're located on the map, just their descriptions are not in that. We talked about study abroad programs earlier. We have field studies and study abroad. So much of the learning happens outside the classroom. If you ever feel, if you're the type of person like myself who gets a little bored in the classroom, you should be checking out these classes. We have everything from going to uh, local prairies, local forest preserves, canoeing. We go to Kalamazoo, we go to Hawaii, we do Australia, evidently. <laughs> um, the <laughs> honors program, this is important too. You didn't have to be academically successful in high school to be in the honors program here. You, things change in college. You, do, be open to that transition. So uh, find out, and it's also more than just classes, there's also a whole social piece that's attached to the honors program. The Mackinac Arts Center is what you're sitting in. We have professional uh, companies that, that perform here, music, theater. Uh, I think we have about five professional ensembles. Yeah, there's a bunch. We have a lot of classes. We have a lot of famous actors and musicians who have come from the uh, Arts Center. And then, of course, student life which we help you connect with all of these other things. We have an outstanding leadership program, and no matter what field you're going into, leadership is something that everyone should get a, uh, be a part of. So with that said, I'm gonna bring up uh, our final speaker, who is, uh, oops, did I go into the, sorry, I'm trying to click and, and move. Uh, but we have Detective Jensen from the police department. So how about a hand for Detective Jensen? Either, either one, either one. Oh, yes, sorry. Would you, would you, would you like three minutes, if possible. Yeah, sorry. All right, how are you guys doing? Good morning. Uh, you were looking at a genius because I was here uh, back in 2003. Good decision for me. Um, that's why I wore my glasses and not my contacts today. But I've uh, been here for 14 years. Uh, just going to really briefly go over our department, what we have to offer. If anyway, anyone has any questions, uh, we do have a table. Um, outside later today if you guys want to stop by and answer any questions. Uh, so who are we as a police department? We are an accredited law enforcement agency just like Glen Allen PD or Wheaton PD or the DuPage County Sheriff. So uh, we are here 365 uh, days a year, seven days a week. So if you guys need any kind of assistance, we're very service oriented. Uh, you guys lock your keys in your car. Uh, maybe your car doesn't start in the winter. We'll come and do complimentary openings and jump starts, things like that. Um, we have two main locations on campus. The first one is way on the opposite side from where you're at right now. This is on the corner of Lambert and Faywell. Uh, we are in the Homeland Education Center. This is kind of where our main office is housed. Um, anyone that's an architecture student or in dental hygiene, if you guys need a prax card, you would go in through door number four and just talk to our administrators over there. Uh, if you guys have had the chance to mill about on main campus, we are um, also located on the Second floor of the Student Resource Center, um, conven conveniently located right across from Starbucks. We have a service desk located there. Um, <clears throat> that's where our lost and found is also housed. So if you guys uh, need to, any kind of police assistance or need to find something you might have lost on campus, feel free to stop by. Um, if you need to get a hold of us by phone, that is our direct line, 630-942-2000. So if you can, punch it in your phone now. That way you don't, you don't have to remember this. 
Um, you can always dial 911, but when you do that, it actually gets kicked over to DUCOM, who uh, serves Wheaton and Glen Ellen. They'll take all your information and then punt it back to us, so it takes a little bit more time. Uh, some of the security features here on campus, um, on the far right, or I guess you're going to, uh, on your right, <laughs> Um, is an emergency call box. You'll see these call boxes located all over the, the parkways, uh, walkways, and parking lots here on campus. Um, if you don't have access to a phone, just press that button in the middle. Um, it says emergency on there, but that's really for any kind of assistance. In the middle there, you'll see a red phone. Those are littered all over campus on the inside of the buildings. Um, a lot of you guys have classes probably on the zero or first level, and you'll notice you won't get very good cell phone reception. Uh, just pick up that phone, it's going to start ringing immediately, and that'll go directly to our dispatch center. So again, if you need any kind of assistance and you see those phones, just feel free to pick it up. Uh, and lastly, I just like to touch base. We have over 1,500 CCTV cameras here on uh, the main campus and on the satellite campuses, so it's kind of like a little London. Uh, we're not always looking at the cameras, but just be mindful that if something does happen, we will go back and check them out, so just be mindful of that. Uh, if you guys have your phones out, download the Raid Guardian app. I'll go over this very briefly, what it does. Um, this is just the UI. Um, you just need your credentials here at COD to sign on. Um, where it says inbox, you can get the latest up-to-date information for any kind of emergency closing, weather closings, or any other just uh, typical emergency information. Uh, where it says the safety timer, some of you guys might be working late here. Uh, and, and, or have late classes, and if you guys are ever worried about going out to your car, you can actually set a safety timer on your phone. Once the safety timer expires, um, it'll actually notify our department, give us your location, we can head out to make sure you're okay. COD tip, if you press on that, you wanna be a little more inconspicuous about uh, contacting the police, you can just click that and send us a text. And then finally, the bottom two, if you press either one of those buttons, that'll go directly to our dispatch center. Uh, we do offer a student worker program here through the college. Um, it's pretty convenient. If you go to class here, you can get out of class uh, and go straight into working. Um, you basically would be working our, our service desk if you guys hang around for more than six months, if you're here for two or three years. Uh, we do give you guys the opportunity to be a student community service officer where you actually get to drive around and squat and, and kind of take care of service oriented calls. Um, or you can actually work in our dispatch center um, and help dispatch calls um, all around campus. Our last two full-time dispatchers um, actually started in the student worker program and now they have full-time jobs with us, so pretty cool there. Uh, you can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and we have just started a uh, police podcast um, where it's actually available through those outlets. Um, we talk about a lot of uh, <clears throat> things that uh, are really important nowadays, and these are some of the classes we have to offer. Through those outlets, um, if you guys just want to take a look at those, um, but I will go ahead and answer any questions um, if you guys want to stop by our table later about any of these classes or anything else. And that's my direct contact information. But welcome to COD and good luck. Thank you. Okay, the last thing is this is the evaluation for uh, this main stage presentation. So before you go, if you could pull out your phones. If you don't have a QR reader, that is the uh, bit.ly link there. It's just a couple of short, quick questions uh, that you could fill out. It really helps us improve what we're doing here and making it better. Well, it's too late for you guys, but we're going to make it better for the next group coming in, right? Um, so with that, go on to your first workshop session. There's OLs all over the place that will help you with directions to help you get there. Um, after your second workshop, we will see you back in here, and we are all looking forward to live band karaoke in the food trucks. Have a good day out there.